Welcome to the Gateway. Those of you here in person and those of you joining online, thank you. It's nice to have you here. Um, every Sunday we have, I need to watch my peripheral with the slide change. Maybe, maybe it will. <laughs> well, um, every Sunday you get the show and <laughs> before service we have a pre-service prayer every Sunday. Um, a great time just to come together and have praise and and prayer requests shared within a really nice group of supporting group. Um, if you're not able to be here in person, you are able to get your prayers um, to the prayer chain led by Catherine by either text or email. It's available information here on the screen or in your programs if you're here in person. You have something to take home with you. Um, we have this week coming up the teen ministry. Um, it yeah. is uh, this Tuesday, the 13th. I think I got the date right. <laughs> um, Going to be here in the gateway for the teens to come together and have a really good time. Um, just worship, fellowship, and all out rambunctiousness, I think. <laughs> so, those of you teens, we look forward to seeing you at um, this Tuesday. Yeah. Bring some friends. And make Dana work for it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> also, we have every Wednesday Bible study. Yeah. Um, just a really in-depth look at the wisdom that God gives us in our hands just to abide by and worship Him through. Um, if you're not able to come in person or you want to just recap, which I've had to do a couple of times, uh, they are available online as well to be viewed. Yeah. I believe the following day, Thursday, they come live um, to be viewed online. That's really nice. We also have men um, men's ministry meeting next week. Um, there has been a location change, so effective this month, it's going to actually be meeting here in the Gateway. Um, same time, same day right now. Pardon my bad uh, cyst, 20 cyst. <laughs> the 20th. It's going to be the 20th um, or Tuesday. <laughs> I am human. I <laughs> but a time uh, just you guys to get together and really have some good bonding and lifting each other up and um, it's a good time. Something that I've hit on today for myself is just worshiping God in everything we do and one of those is just choosing to um, tithe or give offering. Um, there are three ways to tithe or give offerings. We've got in person here with our donation box. You've got online, which is nice and safe and secure, and then you can also mail it in. Um, so it's just one of those ways that God provides for us as we feed into his um, will, and it's just been one of those things that I've really seen the blessing of is that he doesn't yeah. fail us. Yeah. He just asks us to believe in him and follow him, and he'll, he has a man to prosper us. That awkwardness aside, let's get Dana up here after a quick prayer. Lord, I'm so thankful for this opportunity. I'm thankful to you for the ability just to be fully and vulnerable and myself in front of you, Lord, that we are able to come together under you and your love that we can just have a future to look forward to a family to look forward to, and love to look forward to. I pray that you open our hearts and that we leave today just a little bit wiser and filled with you. I'm thankful for Dana as he comes up to lead us in a, his message, and I'm so thankful for you, Lord. Just so blessed. Every day I want to worship in you and be filled with you. Thank you so much for being God. In your name I pray, amen. 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 
been a good morning, hasn't it? Yeah. 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 Amen. Yeah. yeah. So glad we have an awesome worship team. Yeah. Yes. Uh, they may say, "Oh no, it's me." Who are you talking about? You know, whatever. But the truth is, we have we are blessed with a great worship team. Yes. Amen. You know, love Jesus, love love us, yeah. and definitely extremely gifted. Praise yeah. God! Thank you for serving. You know, those those of us who are serving, and I'm not saying this for me. But please, if somebody blesses you through their service, tell them how grateful you are. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, we do it to veterans. We do it to, you know, I mean, you know, we do it to other people, other people who serve. You know, thank a fireman, thank a nurse, thank a this one. Thank the people who serve in your darn local church, too. Yeah. <laughs> please. I'm not, I'm not fishing for compliments from me. Don't, please. please. But if you want to give them, I'll be grateful. <laughs> but the truth is, no. You know you, you know how it is when you're serving, you're doing stuff, and uh, somebody says thanks. You're like, oh, you feel all that. But, but inside, you're like, man, you know, God's using me. It's good. It's good. So anyway, yeah, I just wanted to hit that. Another couple of things really quick is uh, beginning next month, uh, the, the team meetings will be moved to a different uh, different schedule. Okay. okay, this month we're meeting on the second and fourth Tuesdays of the month. Beginning in October, we're moving the team meetings to the first and third Tuesdays of the month. Okay, okay so we're just moving them to a different set of Tuesdays. We're doing that. There's a scheduling thing with other ministries and all. This is just going to work better. Okay. okay, so we're still meeting two times a month. We're just moving to two different two different uh, days. And the men's meeting will be moved to the second Tuesday of the month, beginning next week from the third Tuesday. And the men are meeting here, okay? So we're going to meet here from now on. Uh, it's going to be a better, a little more central location for the guys. And uh, boy, we have fun, don't we, men? Man, Jesus meets with us. It's really. I mean, the worship and the, 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 just the sharing, it's really good. So, men, if you haven't been to one of those, you need to. Okay? There's a good chance if you come to one, you'll come to more. Yes. Yeah, sure. Yeah, go ahead, Arnold. Um, the other the other announcement I wanted to make about the youth is I, I know we call it team ministry, but it's not necessarily teens. It's youth, mm -hmm. and so that is sixth grade through twelfth grade. Oh, okay. So you can be eleven through seventeen and go because we just don't want the middle school to miss out. Okay, yep. right. and the our children's ministry they have children, and sometimes middle school age is a little bit old for children. So we have right. the children up until about fifth grade, okay. sixth grade up. We we and and for high school like the older teens, what we'll what we will eventually be doing is we'll have little breakouts where we have the younger kids during the youth meeting yeah. to make it to where if there's something specific to an older teen. There, there'll be kind of separated, so so everything's age appropriate. It's a wider age group, but that doesn't mean we can't play games together and have yeah. fun together, but also keep the content um, separated, just so, just for you, for everybody to kind of have a picture. When we say team, we mean youth. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, we had a great day yesterday. Woo! Youth went on a road trip. All right. Yeah, went to Crescent Lake and Mary Mary Falls, okay. and uh, uh, they they actually jumped in the lake and swam around in Crescent Lake. I was yeah. impressed. Is that full? It, well, <laughs> they, 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 yeah, they, they're they. I didn't get in. <laughs> so I can't I can't speak with conviction on that one. But uh, when Josh when Joshua jumped in, they they went out on this dock, wow. and I was so really. When he jumped in, I heard this big, <gasps> <laughs> and I started laughing. I said, yep, it is cold. <laughs> you know how it is when you hit the cold water? There's a gas, but then you can't really breathe. <laughs> but they stayed in. They wow. stayed in and played in the water, and I was like, oh, go, guys. Wow. I was impressed. I was impressed. But it, we had a great time. Had I went out, got ice cream. Went, they went swimming, hiked up to Mary Mary Falls. Wow. We just had a blast. It was fun. Okay. It was fun. Yeah. yeah, it was great. That was the maiden voyage of the new church band. <laughs> yeah, it was very comfortable and roomy, and it was nice. Right. So praise God. Yeah. God gave us a van at just the right time. Yeah. 
So we'll be doing some more stuff like that. But yesterday was the first one. So I just want to tell you, next week I'll have some photos. I've got some, we, me and Cheryl took, I probably took about 20 photos and Cheryl took at least 100. <laughs> so I have to, when I find a phone, I have to get one with a huge memory. And it's not for me. It's for the, the times I long share on my phone. Because she can't tell it, it turns into a photo shoot every time. So, oh, she freeze. And all right, that goes my memory. We have fun. Though. Praise God. Yeah, everybody's laughing. Yeah, if it was just me, I, I, I take photos too, but not as many. So, but it was a blast. So, thank you, everybody who came. Thank you. It was fun. So today I'm going to touch on something that I've preached on this before. Of every, about every couple of years I speak on functional family. And I really felt like that it was time to touch this again. It was about two years ago that I preached on, on this topic. And I basically it's a revised, this is a little bit revised message of that. But there are certain things that, there are certain topics that need to be uh, spoken about often. Yeah. Okay. Forgiveness, spiritual warfare, functional family. I mean, there, and I could go on with the list. There are things, foundations of the faith. There are things that need to be hit uh, annually or biannually because we just, it's almost like getting a, a refresher in those things. Yeah. And it's, you know, we just need it. And plus, we have quite a few new people in the church as well. Right. And whenever me and Cheryl, uh, when God led us here, uh, and I was praying, and the first thing that really stuck out when we decided to actually plant the church here was, number one, is the world does not need another church. You with me? The world does not need another church group. All right? The world needs healthy, functioning, local family groups that call themselves churches. There's a difference. There's a difference. You know, there's religious and this and that and the other, and I forgot how many denominations and all this, yet there's one Bible and we're just trying to learn how to do family well. Yeah. <laughs> so we're going to be talking about functional family. Now, how many in here have a good idea of what dysfunctional family looks like? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Woo! Yeah. yeah. Hands everywhere. And, and those of you who didn't raise your hand, you're smiling because you're probably still getting over a lot of what happened. Yeah. <laughs> you're like, yeah, I'm working like Jesus. But, but uh, you know, we all understand what dysfunction looks like. Um, you know, and there are a lot of people here in this room who've been hurt through dysfunctional interactions with family and others. I mean, all of us have. I mean, all of us, you know, we're maybe nightly or one of the small children, you know, you know, this, and, and, and they're a little dysfunction. They think it's huge and it really isn't, you know, but that's babies. But all of us who've, who've had any, some years, um, we all have been hurt through dysfunctional interactions with people. That's part of it. And really, the truth is, very few people, very few, are actually raised in a healthy, functioning family yeah. in this country. Very few. I mean, there are some, but very few are. Yeah. Um, but, you know, my family, I want to touch on mine just a little bit. Some of you may remember some of this story. When my family, when I was raised in a very dysfunctional home, you know, no bones about it. And whenever there was a disagreement in my house, of course, the arguing began, and it escalated, and occasionally go physical. There was physical violence and fighting and arguing and, and all that. And that's the way they would try to resolve stuff. And you know what the resolution was? It is the one who gave up first lost. Yeah, right. That's it. And sometimes that was due to just exhaustion. Sometimes something else came up, and they couldn't continue to fight, so they, they walked off the battlefield. Yeah, you're right. And so they lost by default. Oh, you're no longer in the game. Oh, that's what, you know, that's just not good. But families live like that. And there was physical things quite often in my house. I mean, my gosh, I can't tell me times that, you know, I, I would walk in the door. I was like, okay, what's going to happen this time? But, you know, that's what I was raised in. Uh, <laughs> ministry training, I think. <laughs> I'm joking, but it's the truth, you know. You know, people stand up my face and cuss me, and I just smile like, okay. Yeah. yeah, that's not that's nothing new to me. I was raised in worse than that. <laughs> but anyway, let's keep going. But yeah, I'm gonna get my microphone. I'm keep bumping it. There, there we go. Okay. But see, Cheryl was also raised in a dysfunctional home. She was. Um, and it's neat because see, Cheryl and I met. We loved each other. We got married. But what was interesting is neither one of us 
were raised in functional families, so neither one of us really knew how to resolve things. That's right. So she brought her own unique special form of dysfunction. Mm -hmm. I brought my own unique special form of dysfunction. And we joined and made a new, a brand new dysfunctional marriage. <laughs> Yeah, I'm laughing about it. I can laugh about it now. I wasn't laughing then. I was like, what are we going to do? It was tough. It was tough. So we, so whenever we had a disagreement, we didn't know how to resolve it because we'd never seen anyone resolve a disagreement in a healthy way. So we'd argue. We never went physical. You know, we never got to the violence and physical part like my family did mostly. I think hers had a little bit of that in, but mine had a lot of that in it. Um, but so we didn't really know what to do. So we'd argue a little bit, and then I'd be like, well, this, this isn't working, but we didn't know anything else to do. Yeah. So this went on for a couple of years. Mm. And, uh, and and so one day, Cheryl wakes up. We're actually living with my mom at this point uh, because our dysfunction rolled over into everything else we did, so we were living with my mom again. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like, you know, our kid, kids, the younger kids and, and even the teen, they look out, oh, it's going to be glorious when I get out there. And then they get out there like, oh, I wish I could be back home. Yeah. <laughs> Let mom and dad deal with this junk. Yeah. <laughs> but so we're living with my mom. Cheryl wakes up next to me one morning. She looks at me. She says, Dana, I'm leaving. And I looked at her and said, I'm going with you. <laughs> and she said, no, 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 you don't understand. I'm leaving you. And I said, no, 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 you don't understand. I'm going with you. Yeah. <laughs> Kind of stopped her. She was not expecting that response. It stopped her, which is good. And uh, what was neat is we called and we agreed to leave together and give it one more shot. Isn't that neat? One more shot. So what we did is we packed up everything we owned into a little pickup truck and we had $20 cash and that was it. And we went to another town. Started over. You know, we're, we were hopeful. But see, that was actually over 36 years ago. This will be 37 years of marriage this year. Nice. Praise God for that one more shot. Amen. Amen. <laughs> but you know, we uh, something in me knew that healthy relationship was possible, and I wanted it desperately. I just didn't know how to do it. Yeah. I didn't know how to do it. Yeah. And so that's why we hung on and, and gave it another shot. Um, it took a lot of years. It took quite a few years and a lot of hard work, <laughs> much help from God. Boy, when I, whenever I trusted Christ, that was a game changer because then yeah. we were all on the same page and God really started helping us. Yeah. You know, God loves marriage. He believes in marriage. Amen. He honors covenant commitment. He does. He will help us more than any, than we can help ourselves yeah. whenever we stay stay committed and do our best. Um, but see, we now, we, me and Cheryl have a wonderful relationship. We have, I mean, we, we do really well together. Our marriage is better today than it's ever been by far. And it keeps getting sweeter and sweeter every year. But it took a lot of work. Yeah. I mean, a lot of work, a lot of uh, disagreements, a lot of not knowing what to do. But God came through. Amen. He came through. But actually, another life-changing thing, and there's a victory for some of you here. Some of you in this room will get a victory right here where I'm going now. Okay. Another life-changing changing thing that God showed me was that he had hand-selected my dysfunctional family for me. Okay. And you may think, no, no, God wouldn't let me go through that. God picked your mom and your dad. Yeah. He handpicked them for you. So let that settle in a little bit. Because so many people blame their parents. If only I had this, if only that had happened. Uh, actually, uh, God gave you what you needed. That's right. He picked mm -hmm. mom and dad for you, even if it was a mess. Yeah. Guess what? That's your special mess yeah, that God gave you. Come on. Right? Uh -huh. So hang in there. Feel like I'm stretching some people's doctrine here a little bit. Right. Just hang in here. I'm gonna tell you. Just let's keep going. Because, see, when God hand selects our family, you know why He does it? Because there's a call on your life, and you needed the raw materials in your life to be who God created you to be. And your mom and dad are the first and primary source. You get the raw ingredients you need for Him to turn you into who you need to be. All right. And that's mom and dad's strengths. That's mom and dad's weaknesses. Mm -hmm. See, you know, you know the clay. There's the image of the of God yeah. getting the lump, putting it on the wheel. Yeah. You know, all clay ain't the same. Mm -hmm. It comes from different places. It has different qualities, different strengths, different weaknesses. Okay. So, guess what? Your family was the perfect clay to create you, 
so that God could get you on the wheel and turn you into the beautiful vessel he wants you to be. You needed that special ingredient that those things mom and dad gave you. The good and the bad and the ugly stuff. And I brought a lot at it. I'm not just, you know, I'm not preaching yeah. from somebody who, you know, oh, I had a perfect family, and boy, you just need to enjoy what you have. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. This is the truth. There, there's right. there's victory here to see that, you know, my mom and dad, no matter what was going on, they were God's best for me. Mm-hmm. How could God tell you to honor your father and your mother that it would go well with you and you'll live long upon the earth? He doesn't say honor your father and your mother if they're Christians and they're in the right spot with mm-hmm. me. Nothing to do with that. Honor your father and your mother if they're if they're messed up. Honor your father and your mother if they're doing right with me. Honor your father and your mother mother if one day they're doing good, the next day they're not. You know, if if they if they took me through a roller coaster ride of whatever, honor them. Let that soak in. Because you honor them because they're God's choice. They're God's best for you. Let me hit something else. How many in here, and I, just by show of hands, it's going to answer this question. How many of you in here have heard of Joyce Meyer? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. oh what do you know? Everybody. Mm-hmm. Okay, have you ever heard of her testimony? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, her father sexually abused her over 200 times. Wow. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, okay. Sorry, kid. Whatever. Oh. Sorry about that. Uh, my bad. Okay, we'll keep going. Sorry. And you're behind Steve, and I just... So, yeah. Okay. That's dysfunction. <laughs> Great conversation later. Great Yeah. Sorry. Um, but anyway, that woman has changed the face of the earth. That's right. Because in that tough spot, she got to know the Lord, her God, yeah. in a way that was exceptional, and God calls those particular ingredients to become a strength in the kingdom. Yeah. Yeah. You see that? Right. God causes all things to work together for good. Yeah. All. That's all inclusive. Yeah. Nothing's left out. Yeah. And when you look at the people, the people who some of the people who've made the biggest impact on the face of the earth have went through some of the toughest family dynamics, some of the toughest things ever. And they changed the face of the earth for Jesus because they got the ingredients they needed in those spots for God to create this masterpiece that can help other people. Amen. Amen. So, so even if you know your family wasn't that good or going or whatever, you had problems with it, and you still haven't quite resolved that, when you get home today, you start praising Jesus, whether they're here or alive or they're already gone, wherever they went. Yeah. God, thank you for mom. Thank you for dad. Because even if they pass, it's going gonna, it's gonna to restore your soul and set you free in some places you need to be free. Praise God. Amen. So, thank God for the clay that we are. <laughs> oh, amen. So I want to hit that because that's a, that's a big thing. For years, I didn't. For years, I believed that somehow or another I was missing out and messed up because of my dysfunctional faith. Well, God spoke to my life and said, "No, they were my best for you." Yeah. And I was like, "Whoa!" Everything shifted. I got a new paradigm. I could see it differently. And then I started thanking God and getting free. Yeah. And then realizing that all those tough things were, were the perfect ingredients to yield to Jesus, and then he could do some stuff through them. Amen. Praise God. But, you know, I believe it's God's intention for his church, his bride on the earth, to be a picture, a role model of what functional family looks like. We're supposed to be a functional family. We are. If we can't do it, how do we expect the world to do it? I mean, they got to look at somebody and say, hey, they got something I need. If they look at church, say, "Wow, they're just just like I am in every way." We're not doing we're not doing our job. We're not doing our best. And that's why, actually, in Genesis, right at the beginning, Genesis two eighteen, it says, "Then the Lord God said, it's not good for the man to be alone. It's still not good for people to be alone. It never has been. I'll make a helper who's just right for him." See, God created the the one person, Adam, mm-hmm. looked at Adam and said, no, 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 this isn't the best here. Uh, family is the best. Mm-hmm. And family is the best for, for every person needs family. It can be, you know, a spouse, it can be kids, it can be even even in here. 
We're we're eternal family, guys. We are. We are. You know, if you're in Christ and I'm in Christ, we're just getting started. And we're going to be together forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Amen. Yeah, so we need to get good at doing family now. <laughs> yeah. And so so then family began. At that moment, God created Eve. And that is the family model. The family model is still one man and one woman. That has not changed. It will not change. Amen. I will never preach anything other than that in this church or any other church. So just settle that. I don't care about the cultural trends and what popular, well, somewhat popular opinion. I don't care. The Bible doesn't change. Jesus don't change. And I'm not going to change when it comes to family and roles and responsibilities and gender things and all that. Because the Bible doesn't change, church. Right. Exactly. Family is still family. It's still one man, one woman, and some kids. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so no. No, when the, when, you know, if, if the Bible's clear, guys, and I say this often, if the Bible's clear on something, you be clear on something. Right. Be nice. Do not be nasty. Don't be mean. Don't be judgmental. Yeah. Don't expect lost people to act like saved people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you got to love them a while until they meet Jesus, and then Jesus and them will sort it out. And we just need to, we just need to be along for the ride and pat them on the back. Yeah. Oh, this is fun. This is fun. Thank you for listening. <laughs> but see, what did it do? God created Adam, he created Eve, and he said, be fruitful and multiply. Have children, inhabit, expand the family, and the family will have dominion. The family will rule and reign over the earth. The family will do what needs to be done to make this place a paradise. And see, God was into relationships from the very beginning. He always has been. Relationship. You know, the only thing in your life that has eternal significance is your relationships. Yeah. Not your stuff, not your, your goals, your dreams, all that. Mm -hmm. Everything is about relationship with God and relationship with people. That's the only thing that's going to roll into eternity with you, yeah. is what you did with those relationships. Yeah. And whatever, what did you, and with your stuff, did you use your stuff to build relationships? Amen. That's stewardship. Mm -hmm. Stewardship. Are you using your stuff wisely? Is it helping relationships? Amen. So, but this relationship thing, there's a reason. Like it says in Ecclesiastes 4, 9 through 12, two are better than one because they have a more satisfying return for their labor. Two, ten. For if either of them falls, the one will lift up his companion. Isn't that good? Amen. But woe to him who is alone when he falls and does not have another to lift him up. Verse 11, again, if two lie down together, they can keep warm. But how can one be warm alone? Verse 12, and though one can overpower him who is alone, two can resist him. And here you go. Here's, this, is a, this, is, this is really one of the keys to unlocking this portion of Scripture. A cord of three strands is not quickly broken. This is a big thing. Isn't it neat? You notice how it went from basically a, a, a comparison of one person in comparison to two. And what that looks like. And then at the end, it, all of a sudden, it multiplies. Like, poof, what happened? We got a third person involved. Isn't that neat? Very much. What it, it's saying what Matthew 18, 20 says. For where two or three are gathered together because of their mind, I will be right there among them. See, anytime two people are doing family the best they can, Jesus is there helping. He's that third strand. You ever tried to make a rope out of two strands? You can't tell that you can't do it. No. But that third one, you can weave it. It can it, the, the strength level goes up exponentially with that. You gotta have a third strand in there to basically gotta have a third strand to keep things together and to make it strong. And that's what it's teaching. Whenever you two of you get together, you're doing your best, you're doing life, you're doing family, you're following God, Jesus is right there, and he's Bring it together. He's tightening it up, and he's giving you strength where you need it. Family. Amen. You know, we need friends and family. Yes. We need other Christ followers to walk through this life with. We do. You know, we need like-minded people to rub up against, and, you know, and we can encourage each other, don't we? We need that. We need it desperately. We need people to pray with us. We need people to prophesy to us. 
You know, we, people, we need people who pray and say, you know, I feel like God shared this with me for you. Boom. We need that word in season. The Bible says, how pleasant is the word in season? I'm going to tell you, when a revelation comes, it is in season. God always speaks at the right time. He's never, you've heard the thing, he's, uh, he's seldom early, but he's never late. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Every time God speaks to us, it's valuable. And most of the time, he speaks to us through our devotion, but I'm going to tell you what, if you're, if you're in a, in a, in a like-minded family who believe in prophecy and God sharing now revelation, guess what? You're going to get spoken to a lot through those people close to you. God will use the people around you to speak his word into your life yeah. often. And I'm grateful for that, man. I'm, I'm, I love that. I love being God's mouthpiece from time to time. And I love yeah. when those around me are God's mouthpiece to me. Amen. It's priceless. It's valuable, church. It's valuable. Yeah. Hmm. But you know, when we trust Christ and we begin to attending a church, guess what? We bring everything we are into that group. Okay, so we're going to go back to a little, not to dysfunction, but back to what that looks like. We bring everything into the group. So guess what? Every one of us sitting here today, we're a package. We're a package deal. We all bring our best self. You with me? So when you come into church, we all, we all bring our best self. But what happens, the more we get to know each other and the more we do stuff together, you get beyond the surface level best self. And you start getting into the dysfunction, the expectations, the hurts, the bitterness, the unresolved things from your dysfunctional past and my dysfunctional past. All that, you're a package of all of that. And so when you come into the church, the package of everything you are comes into that group. And while we all put on our best face and everything, over time, we start seeing, wow, man, God must have touched that. Or man, what is that? You know, what's going on? What is that? And it's like we hang out a little bit and we all get to eat a little bit of each other's manna. <laughs> you know? And you know what manna is, don't you? It means, what is that? What is it? And you hang out a little bit and something comes out and like, oh, what was that? <laughs> oh, that's just a little manna. I'm just sharing a little manna with you. <laughs> we laugh. It's funny. But guys, this is it. Whenever you, you and I, when we come into a church family, we bring our culture, our expectations, our unresolved hurts, our inherited family traits, our views of right and wrong, our personal convictions, our priorities. And on top of that, if that wasn't enough, you mix in the call of God, which will push, pull, and do all kind of stuff in our life as it's being fulfilled, our giftings, and the season of life. We're in with God. Just a couple things. <laughs> so every time I interact with Sister Mary, I'm interacting with all of that. You know what? That's a lot, isn't it? That's a lot. You know, it's a miracle that we're actually able to get anything done. <laughs> and when you look at that, it's like, wow, you really are awesome, God. You're that Gorilla Glue, man. You can keep this thing stuck together whenever. <laughs> Without Jesus, this thing would have flew apart a long oh, time yeah. ago. Yeah. Oh. See, we bring the good and the not so good into our church family. True. We do. Yeah. And that's a right. big deal. And see, I, I wish that trust in Christ resolved all this, but it does not. It does not. When you trust Christ at the cross, he saves your soul. But guess what? You just became an athlete and walked up to the starting line. That's what it is. You finally got into race. So you're just you're just ready to start. You're just ready to run. And then Holy Spirit's going to help you. But he does not deal with all this stuff at the cross. He does not. Holy Spirit comes in your life, and Holy Spirit, little by little, yeah. day by day, helps us deal with it. You know, line upon line, brick upon brick, we're changed from glory to glory, it says in Corinthians. And just like the children of Israel, when they went into the promise land, God said, I'm not going to drive out all your enemies at one time, or the land will be too big and you can't handle it. Yeah. If God drove all of it at once, we could not handle that level of freedom. We'd freak out and flake out. Yeah. See, that's too much freedom for somebody to get who's not who's never known freedom. But that's why we come in and the Holy Spirit helps us little by little, day by day. Which is a good thing. It's just wonderful. 
And see, that's what happens at the cross. You know, it's a brand new start. It's a brand new race for us. It's wonderful. Our soul's saved. Holy Spirit helps us. He forgives everything before that. Oh, we're completely clean, forgiveness-wise, from that point back. All right, so we're forgiven. We're, we got a clean slate. But the forgiveness is not the same thing as the dealing with, working through, and sorting through all those things that have been part of our being. There's a difference. You get a clean start to work on it, to deal with it. And see, then through our devotions, serving each other, serving people, serving the family, serving the community, serving in the church, and, and gathering with other believers, we're transformed. Transformed day by day. You know, a healthy family environment is meant to be a safe place to change. It is. You know, in this house right here, you know, you're going to get you're going to get acceptance. You're going to get love. You may have a hard conversation or two with somebody here or me, but that doesn't. Hey, it's, it's not based on nothing. It's based on judgment. Right. It's based on us really trying to help each other. Yeah. Yeah. It's huge. Yeah. You know, it's a big deal. Mm -hmm. see, and that's my the go. Our heart, by the on the council, our heart is that this is a healthy family environment. Yeah. It is. It's got to be healthy. Not a place of judgment and condemnation. Jesus dealt with all that stuff. Yeah. And I'm not qualified to judge anyway, are you? No. No, I didn't go I didn't go to the cross. I visited the cross, but I didn't go to the cross. Amen. <laughs> yeah. But you know, please keep in mind, I'm not talking about a group like uh, the gateway is not a group that avoids dealing with things and avoids talking right. about stuff. We don't. Because that is not healthy. Mm -hmm. Ducking and dodging and playing the ostrich doesn't help anybody. <laughs> it does not. It does not. And also, please keep in mind, I'm not talking about a group where everyone makes it a lifestyle of not dealing with things and not speaking up about things. Yeah. All right? We're not doing that. There's groups like that all across this country. You know, everything is surface. Nothing ever gets any deeper. Yeah. That's not healthy. Yeah. We must be real with each other. God, we need to talk. You know, we need to talk with someone when something when something rubs us wrong, when something bothers us. We need to talk. We need to share. We need to, to connect with people. Amen. We really do. And, you know, we, we will away at our own life by holding too much in. If you walk around in a state of internal turmoil because you're not praying for your stuff, you're not releasing your stuff, yeah. you're not connecting with that person, person who rubbed you wrong, what you're doing is you're literally burning the energy that you don't have to spare, mm -hmm. that your body needs to stay healthy. Yeah. So deal with your stuff. Yeah. Deal with it. Stay nice. Yeah. Stay nice. Mm -hmm. But deal with it. But you'll wear yourself out by not dealing with things and not facing things and not resolving things. And that, that goes not just for the, you know what happens in here. That you're way back. I don't care how far back. If you got something still troubling you, you and the Holy Spirit need to visit to get your yeah. pigly back. Yeah. That way you can stop wasting energy on something that's unresolved. You know, things don't just go away if we don't deal with them. No, they don't. Right, so let's keep going. And with that in mind, <clears throat> Yeah, please come on. So maybe I'm just being like empathetic or I'm feeling, anyway. Um, I, this topic, because most people who have been in church for any length of time have been hurt by church. Yep. They've been hurt by leaders. They've been hurt by people in church. They've been, they've been just hurt. <laughs> like, yeah. We hurt. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And I just want to say that I'm not trying to like, I guess I'm in, in conjunction with what Dana's yeah. saying. Yeah, we're, we're real people doing real life yes. together, mm -hmm. which means that elbows get rubbed. Yeah. And sometimes they don't just get rubbed, they get poked. Yeah. Like, yeah. Donna poked me in the ribs. Yeah. Darn it. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm just sorry. thinking at you. But the one thing we can control, because we can't control what other people say. Right. Um, somebody woke up on the wrong side of the bed, burnt the bacon, and came to church and got rude. Yeah. We can't control that they came off as not not sweet. All right, right. But we can control how we partner with God in that, and if we yep. choose to right, partner right. with God in that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I've had I've had not just interactions; I've had entire seasons, and you have too, yeah. where you've had to navigate a, a church experience that wasn't yeah. very comfortable. Mm -hmm. 
and was ongoing. But I just want to encourage us all that if we partner with God in those relationships and say, God, mm -hmm. what do you have for me? How can I develop in this? Yeah. What do you want to be for me now that you couldn't be for me any other time? Help me navigate this. And there's been times, and I know for you too, that, or some of you, that you've navigated relationships and there was no putting that thing, it was Humpty Dumpty off the wall. Like there was no putting it back together. But you can be assured that if you're partnering with God in family yeah. and in relationship, that God's got your back. Yeah, that's right. And you're going to come yeah. out of it better, right. stronger, yeah. faster. Yeah. That's right. Like, like the thoroughbred. Yeah. You know, we can yeah. do this. Yeah. We can yeah, do this. And we don't have to carry the pain. Mm -hmm. We don't have to. We can shake it off. That's right. What's that? What's that? What's that girl's off. name? What's that? What's her uh, name? Is it Taylor Swift? Yeah, Taylor yeah. Swift. That's that one, one song. Shake it off. Yes. <laughs> you know, we, we can shake it off. We can't with the Holy Spirit's help. Yeah. And it's, it's when we're partnering with God yeah. and just giving each other some slack. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you do it with your family. You, you know, you have to you do yeah. it with your family, with your other, with your real family. But we have, you know, we have to. So we can definitely do it here to love each other. Yeah, that's good. Thank you, Dora. Yeah. I'm always happy when my lovely bride preaches. So. That's right. She's my favorite preacher. She's hired. What's that? She's hired. Yeah. Amen. That's good. But see, relationship and family is so complex. Yes. I pray a lot for God to help me in my interactions with other people. Yeah. I pray about that a lot. I mean, no joke. Mm -hmm. Our moments are so special with other people and with our family yeah. that we need to be praying a lot for God to help us make the most of them. Amen. You know, we don't need to just blaze in and deal with stuff. We need to say, God, please help me. Yeah. God, please help me not to hurt them. Help me to have your heart for them. God, help me to see where you're working in their life so I can partner with you better there. Yeah. Lord, help me to not be so darn sensitive when they say that same thing that's rubbed me wrong too many times. You see, pray. Pray, and God will help you. God helps me a lot with relationship, and I need it. I want it. You know, guys, we're, we're, we're not just having moments with people. We're having eternal interactions with yeah. people. Every moment is precious. Every moment is vital. You know? We gotta, we gotta do our best, and God can help us. But you know, church, we all are unique. We all are gifted. Yeah. We all are able to reach our full potential. Every one of us here can reach our full potential in God. But here you go. But not one of us will reach our full potential alone. Mm -hmm. Amen. Hey, there ain't no solo act out here in the world. One individual doing their thing. Is going to reach their full potential. You will not do it alone. You cannot do it alone. God is designed for you not to do it alone and me not to do it alone. We have to have other people. We have to. So just a, a question, and I, I, hit, I, hit, I share this with a group every so often. When, when you think about your own life, when you and God have dealt with things or things have been revealed that you need to work on, you know, something came up, like, Ooh, I got I to gotta deal with that. You got two two categories, okay? You and Jesus completely alone in your devotion time and him showing you that thing to work on, or you visiting with other people and one of them rubbing you wrong and you seeing that thing you need to work on. <laughs> okay, how many people has the I'm talking about the predominant means of God revealing what you need to work on has that been revealed in your devotion time? Raise your hand. Amen. Got a couple, about just a hand. How many, how many people has the number one way that God has shown you what you need to work on and deal with been revealed through an interaction with another human being? Yeah. Woo! Yeah, I knew it. Most of the group. Yeah. And those who didn't raise your hand, I saw the heads. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Seriously. Yeah, God reveals things through our devotions, but he will reveal three times as much or more yeah. through an interaction with another human being that's whenever that thing in you that needs to be dealt with will be touched. And the Holy Spirit says, like, see that? See that? See that? <laughs> he does it. But he uses people. Amen. People's dysfunction or whatever, or our end, whatever happens, it will reveal, it will shine the light in that spot where the Holy Spirit wants to work on something most of the time. Mm -hmm. vast majority of the time. Praise God for that. Um, see, that's very much 
what Ephesians 4 16 is talking about. It says, From him, the whole body, the church, and, his, and all its various aspects, joined and knitted firmly together by what every joint supplies. See, what you supply is important. It says, when each part is working properly, causes the body to grow and mature, building itself up in unselfish love. Each part working properly causes growth. I'm going to tell you what, whenever there's a part not working properly from time to time, it causes growth too. Yeah. Cool. It does. Cool. Cool. Paul didn't write that, but I've seen it to be true. Yeah. <laughs> you know, if something's not working right, it's like, what? what was that? Yeah. All right, Jesus. Help! Help! Yeah. But see, every joint, every every person brings their uniqueness to the body. Okay, your uniqueness. That's why we pass the mic. That's why we share testimonies. That's that's why we do what we do. Is we want your uniqueness to add to the collective. Yeah. See, we're a body, and all of us bring something that this this local body needs. It's important. It's a big deal. So I appreciate you supplying that part that we all need. Amen. Thank you. But you know, all of us are equipped and empowered with special things. And that's very much like the saying here from Marge Kennedy. Soup is a lot like family. Each ingredient enhances the others. Each batch has its own characteristics. And it needs time to simmer. To reach full flavor. It needs time. Time to simmer. Yeah. Time right. You know, when you first put all the ingredients in the soup and you taste it, what, what is it? Oh, bland. Yep, bland. Uh, ain't much it. happening in there yet. No, not at all. But you let it simmer. That's let right. it simmer. Let it simmer. And guess what? Then all the flavors oh, yeah. marry together. That's a word I'm not using around here that much, but in Southeast, they marry together. Yeah. Yeah. And then guess what? Then it becomes that good pot of soup you were hoping for. Oh, yeah. But it takes time. Mm. Time. And guess what else it takes? A little bit of heat. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what you're seeing in that statement, but it must be good. <laughs> heat always causes the impurities to float to the top so we can deal with them. Always. That's how gold's refined. That's how silver's refined. You know, you put the heat on it and the impurities float to the top and the purity stays below. And then you have to skim it off. That's right. You know, you, you don't just look at them pretty impurities and walk away and say, well, I hope something happens. <laughs> yeah. No. Us in partnership with the Holy Spirit, That's skim good. off the impurities and deal with them and, and, and yield them to Jesus Christ. Yeah. And then they're out and, the, and our lives are more pure. Mm -hmm. That's what that's what family's about. Amen. So I'll share a quick testimony. One man that really, really drove this home with me was a gentleman in North Carolina. Um, some of you remember this story. It's a good one. But, you know, I was a young, fiery Christian. Had every bit as much spawn for maybe more than I've got now. But what I did is, uh, is we, we started a home group in North Carolina, a life group. And there was this gentleman, a, a native man from, from North Carolina, just soft-spoken, gentle, loved God, easy going. Yep. Him and his wife were leading this group. Here comes me and Cheryl. And Cheryl was great to work with, but I was not. <laughs> yep. You know, I was, I was full of fire and had the call of God just pulling me every which way. And I was, and, you know, and I'm going to use the, a, a word that is Christian appropriate. I was a pain in his butt. Okay. <laughs> I'm serious, man. He would teach something, and I, of course, I knew what he really meant to say, but didn't quite say it. So, so I was, uh, so I was, you know, I was you know, taking people to that next level that he couldn't quite get them to, prophesying and praying and doing teachings, and I was just being a terribly difficult person. And I, and I, that went on for a, a brief period. And he he called me one day and he said, "Dan, we need to talk." And you know what I heard? Promotion. Yeah, <laughs> you, you, remember, you remember a little SpongeBob movie? I'm ready. Promotion. I'm ready. Promotion. That's, what, that's, what, that's what I was saying. I was like, man, he sees the call and the anointing, and boom, here we go. Moving up the food chain. Right. Yeah, so we set a time he comes over to the house, and I'm all eager and excited because here we go, man. I'm about to, something's about to happen. There. I didn't realize what was about to happen. And he, he looked at me and said, Dana. 
He said, uh, and I don't remember the exact wording. I do remember some of it. But basically, it was Dana, you are really being difficult. Mm -hmm. He said, Dana, he said, he said, here's what it is. He said, in that in that group, you're not to pray with anyone. You're not to prophesy. You're not to take anybody off to the side anymore and share something else with them. You, if you want to come to that group, you, you just be there. You be nice, but you can't do any more of this until I tell you you can. And I looked at him and I said, I'm going to have to pray on that. <laughs> yeah. But what I did is I went inside and I said, God, is this true? And the Holy Spirit just convicted me to the core of my being. I said, yeah. oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Yeah. He was the first man who'd ever got in my face and told me the truth. Mm. Amen. That's good. Yeah. Priceless. That's good. Yeah. I prayed. I was convicted. I prayed. I cried. The next morning, I called him back and I said, "Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for for having the the. I'll just say the guts. Yeah. <laughs> having the guts yeah. to be pointed and direct with me. Mm -hmm. I said, God confirmed what you said." And I said, look, I said, I will help you. I will do whatever you want me to do. You let me know if I'm if anything's out of whack, I'll do whatever I, whatever you need me to do, I will do just just what you want and help you. And you know what he said? He said, now we can get something done. Yeah. Yeah. Praise God for that man. Amen. It was just a short period of time later, and we were promoted in the church. We did have life groups. We started birthing life groups and yeah. sending people out. Yeah. And then, you know, the ministry kept going. Mm -hmm. You know, up till now. But yeah. you know, it started with a moment of humility because somebody loved me enough to not duck and dodge the issue they spoke to me yeah that's good that man will have a uh, put his way gonna have a big reward in heaven for straightening my butt out yeah <laughs> <laughs> and you know what and i'm gonna be right there patting him on the back saying yeah he deserves it yeah yeah you know yeah. that's good in scripture in proverbs 27 5 and 6 says it's better to be corrected openly if it stands from hidden love you can trust a friend who wounds you with his or her honesty, but your enemy's pretended flattery comes from insincerity. Mm -hmm. That man loved me too much to leave me alone. Yeah. Thank God for people who love us too much to leave us alone. Right. Mm. Thank you, God. Yeah. Proverbs 27, 17, it takes a grinding wheel to sharpen a blade. And so a friendly argument can sharpen a man or a woman. I like it, a friendly argument. Isn't that neat? So question, when you're sharpening a knife, a blade of, a blade of any kind, any kind of blade, okay, the blade's made out of steel, okay, what has to happen for it to get sharp? Resistance. Friction. I'm sorry? Friction. Friction. Okay, resist, yeah. Anybody else? Why? What sharpens the blade? Safety edge. I'm sorry, Mike. Safety edge. Mm -hmm. right. I was going to say the grind of that wheel. You guys are right. Mm -hmm. So for an edge to get sharp, something has to be removed. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it stays dull. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So something has to be removed from that that metal for it to be sharp. The outer shell. Mm -hmm. And so that's a big deal because. For you and I to stay sharp in the spirit hmm. in this okay. life, we have to keep our edge. That's good. We have to keep our edge, guys. We have to keep our edge. Hmm. You know, and just as metal must be removed from a blade to get it sharp, guess what? Our fleshly nature must be removed regularly for us to stay sharp. Hmm. And that's what happens whenever a friend or someone who loves you, I'm talking about who loves you, not somebody just coming to mess with you and fix you. If somebody don't love you, they have no right to speak into your life. Amen. They don't. I mean, but let me let me adjust that just a teeny bit. That while that is true, occasionally I've had people speak into my life who I knew didn't really care about me, but it was the word of the Lord. Okay. Okay. They were. It was the word of the Lord. I've had I've had non-believers prophesy to me. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah, I've had people who did not know Jesus because I knew they did not know Jesus. It was kind of obvious. But they spoke to me, and it was the word of the Lord. It's like, oh, my goodness. You think Holy Spirit can't speak to whoever he wants to whenever he wants to? He can. He can. And, and that, that human being was substantially 
more valuable and more important than the donkey that talked to Balaam. That's right. <laughs> See, God does what he wants to do through whoever he wants to. But I'm, I will say this, though. When somebody really loves you and they say something hard, listen. Listen. You know, that we have a pastor in North Carolina. He said, the one who loves the most is the most vulnerable. I've had conversations with people that were lasting two minutes, three minutes. They don't realize I've been praying and crying for hours for the days leading up to that. Thank you, God. Amen. Church, as we continue to grow and get to know each other better, there will be some interactions that are uncomfortable. Okay? Just so you know, I may rub you wrong sometimes. I say that. Yeah. You know, and, and other people in here may rub you wrong sometimes. Yeah. You know, there'll be, there'll, and we'll pick it up right here, there will be times that someone may say or do something that upsets us. It happens. We're people. And see, when this happens, we must first, here's where you start, yeah. before you dive into somebody to figure out what happened, prayerfully check our own heart. I have actually found that this first step deals with most of our misunderstandings. When you look yeah, at yourself right. first prayerfully, that'll deal with most of your misunderstandings. Yeah. <laughs> then, if that doesn't resolve the problem, connect with the other person and sort it out. When sorting a misunderstanding out with someone, here you go. Here's the process that I use. Okay? Always give people the benefit of the doubt. Most of the time, the person who upset us didn't mean to. Okay, next one. Everyone makes mistakes sometimes, including us. Yeah. We do. All of us do. Yeah. Also remember that they may be working through something you and I, you or I know nothing about. When somebody's really in a tough spot dealing with something, Sometimes they get edgy, don't you? Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah, and sometimes we are the, you know, who know nothing, kind of feel some of that edge. Yeah. So be, be, be filled with grace. And lastly, church, most often we are one or two conversations away from working things out with others. That's a huge one. I, man, I found that to be true so many times. Yeah. People will stew on stuff for years, oh, yeah. and they make right. one quick phone call, and all of a sudden they're set free. All those who knows how many hours that they struggle with something when they just need to have one or two conversations they can be free yeah. Amen. my gosh and if it's somebody you can't have the conversation with because they passed on or it's just not safe to, right. you know, for whatever reason then what you do is you keep praying and sorting out with Jesus yeah. until the burden's gone yeah. Yeah. you can yeah. pray through something until the burden's gone when that burden's gone then you can you get your victory the same way as if you'd resolve it with that person you can't resolve it with You know, if somebody's dangerous, don't force yourself in their presence and risk getting hurt again. Or if they went on home to be with the Lord or went on wherever they went, yeah. you know, and you can't do it, pray through it. Get your victory. Get free. It is totally up to you and I whether or not we're free. You know that. That's, that, that ball's in our court. Jesus made the way. He provided what we need, but it's up to us whether or not we take him up on it. Here's a, here's a good question, what you call a contemplative question. In a disagreement, what is most important, being right or being nice and kind? Proving your point or respecting the other person? What's more important? Being nice and kind. Yeah. Being nice and kind is always more important. Yeah. It is. And respecting the other person is always more important. Yeah. You know, when somebody's always right, yeah. what can you do with them? I mean, really, I'm not being rude. I've had, there's people over the years I've said, look, don't you ever get tired of being right? Yeah. <laughs> or somebody feeling it on this side of the room. <laughs> the Holy Spirit blows it out. <laughs> But it's the truth. You know, somebody's always right. What do you do with that? Do you know what? God can't do all he wants to do in the life of somebody who's always right either. Yeah. 
If they're right with you all the time, they're going to be right with God all the time, and God don't work like that. <laughs> uh, just a little bit more. Thank you for going with me. Oh, this is fun. Praise God. One other quick testimony, then I'll wrap up. Okay. Several years ago, myself and a couple other pastors were ministering at a men's, a big men's rally. And uh, we, were ministering, we were doing prophetic ministry. And so we're just kind of standing in the room, walking around, and I'm saying, and I'm just praying, I say, Lord, who do, you want me to, who do you want me to share something with? And Lord will point people out. So he points this man out, and I get this, this detailed word for him, and I'm like, okay. And, uh, but I had a check in my spirit about going over to him, so I just waited. And then at the end of the meeting, he was walking around, I went up to him, and I said, hey, brother, so I feel like God laid something on my heart for you. And you know what he did? He looked at me, and what he pointed at me, he said, I don't know you. He said, I don't know you. He said, and I said, what can I share? He said, no, I don't know you, so you can't share with me whatever you want to share, because I don't know you. Okay. Now, a lot of ministers, pastors, people would got offended right there. They'd be like, what? I got a word from God for you. And you know what I did? I looked at him, I said, thank you. Yeah. I said, thank you for being responsible with what you led in your life. See, that man ain't going to receive a bunch of junk, is he? Because he ain't let a little bit in, so he's being right. careful. But I said, thank you so much. And I walked away, and guess what? Holy Spirit got it. Yeah. He came up to me later and said, um, would you mind sharing with me? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know why he came back to me? Yeah. Because I respected and honored him. That's right. I didn't push and get a nasty attitude and walk away. Right. If I did that, I've never been able to speak that life that God gave me for that man in his life. That's right. You see? So it is. I said, and he came up to me and he said, Would you share with I just I started laughing. I said, Of course I would. <laughs> I said, I'll be happy to share with yeah. you, brother. And I said, Thanks again for being so responsible. And I said, I said, okay. And I said, Can I place my hand there? He said, Yeah. And I was able to speak that word into his life. Yeah. And he received it. He received it deeper into the soul of his heart than he would have if I would not have respected that man. Right. That's right. Yeah. That's good. Respect people, love people, yeah. be nice to people. Yeah. Hey, that's that's the kingdom expanding right there. Yeah. You do that. And I may preach on this soon, but that's actually that's 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 the right way to do things, but it's also part of creating a fertile environment. Yeah. There's a lot there's a lot to ministering to people. More than just getting your ministry on or doing something. Right. There's a lot right. more to it. All right, so let's keep going. We're just about to wrap up. Proverbs 17, 17. A dear friend will love you no matter what. Yeah. And a family sticks together through all kinds of trouble. I love whenever God puts all in there. That way we can't weasel our way around it. <laughs> oh, praise God. So anytime a group of people build a relationship, do things together, there will from time to time be friction. You know, there will. Because... Proverbs 14, 4, the only clean stable is an empty stable. <laughs> Don't need to teach that much. It seems like everybody got the Holy Spirit's revelation in that one. So if you want the work, look, if you want the work of an ox and to enjoy a, an abundant harvest, you're going to have a mess or two to clean up. I don't want an empty stable. I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're here. So we'll have a master to clean up. Yeah. Uh, but please keep in mind, we want an abundant harvest, just like the scripture says. And you can't get an abundant harvest without a little bit of mess from time to time. Yeah. All right. Yeah, we're about three minutes out. All right. Okay. You know, most of our misunderstandings happen uh, because of a lack of communication or miscommunication, the majority of them. Communication is the key. Just like it's in marriage, just like it's in life, communicate, talk about it, talk it through. It's important. It's important. And don't be shy asking clarifying questions. This is something me and Cheryl have been in marriage ministry for a while, and we led a marriage ministry for several years. And one of the things that was one of the best things I learned at that, that ministry was ask clarifying questions. And one of the ways that it was, if somebody says something and it rubs you wrong, you feel an emotion arise, Immediately restate, so this is what I hear, and this is what I heard. Is this what you, you meant? Then it's not being like, why did you say that? <laughs> no, it's like, okay, this is what I heard. This is what I heard you say. Okay, did I hear you correctly? Okay, is this what you meant? So you, what you're doing is you're restating what you heard so they can hear it, and then they can clarify 
And that deals with a lot of stuff. Just, just asking the right questions, listening, that makes a big difference. But that was one of the biggest things I got out of the marriage ministry is restating because this is what I heard. Yeah. Is this what you meant? That's, good. That's a big deal. Yeah. That, that's actually been priceless in me and Cheryl's relationship, restating things. Okay. Church, there's an enemy trying to take every Christian out. Yeah. The devil cannot hurt God directly. Mm -hmm. he, he's too weak. And he yeah. tried that already. Yeah. So he wants to destroy Jesus' bride. And the primary way he does this is to cause trouble between the members of his bride. Mm -hmm. That's the number one way he messes up the church and messes up our lives and causes yeah. dysfunction that we don't resolve. Yeah. And here you go in closing. As the family goes, so goes the nation, and so goes the whole world in which we live. Amen. Amen. Right. Praise God. Okay, so in your interactions, it's the last scripture, in your interactions with people, James says, understand this, my beloved brothers and sisters, let everyone be quick to hear. Be a careful, thoughtful listener. I like the notes in the Amplified. Slow to speak. A speaker of carefully chosen words and slow to anger, patient, reflective, and forgiving. Okay. And my first Sunday school teacher, a long time ago, he said, you know why God gave you two ears and one mouth? <laughs> he said, because you're supposed to be listening at least twice as much as you're talking. <laughs> Let's close. Lord, thank you for your word. Thank you for, Lord, your presence. God, help us here at the Gateway to be a healthy, functioning family. Yes. Lord, for our benefit and our family's benefits, but also for this world to see a model of what it can look like for them. Thank you, God. Yes. Thank you, God. And we love you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Amen.